Very good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. So I can see Manan, me, Subhuji, Likhit. Very good evening to you all. Then I think we have Sankar, Nehal, Vidal, Sparsh, Adarsh. Very nice to see you, Adarsh. And we have Sana. Okay, so how is everyone doing today? Is it going good at your end? Did you revise from our last class? What were we doing in our last class? We did a lot about directions. Okay, let's do a quick revision. We discovered different types of directions based upon the compass direction and the direction as mentioned on navigation charts. So what are the directions as mentioned on navigation charts? We have true directions on navigation charts. And the most simple equipment with which you can find directions, a standalone equipment, is your magnetic compass. Your magnetic compass gives you magnetic directions. But that magnetic direction is not accurate because of aircraft magnetism that causes the compass direction to deviate from the actual magnetic direction. The difference between the magnetic direction and compass direction is known as deviation. Is everybody thorough with this point? Yes, no, maybe. Speak. Talk back to me. Affirm, sir. Only two students. How about others? Affirm, sir. Affirm, sir. Only five students are responding. How about others? Remember, it has to be an interactive session. You have to reply back whenever I'm asking you to talk. Okay. So that is deviation. What is variation? Who can tell me about variation? The angular difference between uh, two north and magnetic north. Okay. The angular difference between two north and magnetic north. So students, before answering, do raise your hand. I'll give you a chance to speak. Let's see how many students are eager to answer. Like it, that is correct. How about you, Subhujit? What's your answer? Sir, the angular difference between uh, magnetic north and compass, compass north is deviation. The angular difference between magnetic north and compass north is deviation. Okay, what about variation? Variation is the difference between uh, true north and magnetic north. True north and magnetic north. The angular difference between true north and magnetic north. Good. Who can give me the rule of thumb? How do we determine mathematical calculations? How do we determine one direction from the other direction? I have two students willing to answer three. Okay. Manan, go ahead. For uh, finding deviation, it's deviation is compass list. Deviation waste, compass based. And for variation is magnetic list. And for variation waste, magnetic based. Yes, this is a simple rule that will help you whether you have to add the variation or deviation value to the relevant reading or subtract it from that reading. Okay. Uh, this is a very simple and very important concept for us to learn. Okay. Variation, deviation, different types of directions. Because uh, in air, you need to know what your direction is so that you can reach your destination. If you lose your direction, it means if you are off track, then you will deviate and you will get lost 
you might not reach on at a destination on time or you might run out of fuel and not have sufficient fuel to fly back to your destination uh, before we start with today's session i'll just show you how it actually happens and how we understand it graphically to study certain numericals okay before that, let me just welcome Shatta, Dinesh, and Sujal. Welcome to the class students. Students, whoever can keep your uh, videos on, please do it. And please ensure you talk back whenever I ask you something because navigation has to be interactive. You have to ask questions and you have to acknowledge whether you're learning something. Okay. So Dinesh, Sujal, and Shatta, do you have any doubts with respect to our last topic, variation, deviation, and the other three directions? Negative, sir. Negative. Dinesh, how about you? Your mic is not yet fixed. And Dinesh, you did not send me your call also, recorded on WhatsApp because my mic was not working. So what we're going to learn today is something that is very, very interesting. We talk about three things in Unision, that is compass plus magnetism plus what is Earth's magnetism. This in itself is a separate uh, category and it encompasses relevant things. These are three different topics for you. In magnetism, we learn about general magnetism. Now, growing up, you must have come across a lot of magnets in life. Yes, we are going to talk about the same magnets here. When it comes to compass, a compass is nothing but a direction-finding equipment using a magnet. So we need to know how a compass works and in, need, in order to know how a compass works, we need to know what magnetism is about. And because we find directions on Earth using a magnetic compass, we need to know if Earth has any magnetic properties or not. If yes, then how, how are these properties uh, relevant to us in aviation studies and in navigation? Okay, so it's a very interesting topic. It can go on for, I think, a couple of classes together. And in the next session, after we are done today, in the next navigation session, I'm going to show you practical compass. I'm going to show you, show you practical magnets and just uh, demonstrate the properties that we're going to talk about right now. But before we start, what I'm going to show about directions is our strategy to understand directions make cardinal points. North, east, South and West. This we already know. Now let's say you have to travel from A to B where your RT, that is required track. Okay. RT is 280. Two. All right. Variation is five degrees west. Find RT magnetic. Now, this is a classic theoretical example of your. CDMVT, right? I'll write CDMVT here for students who were not present just to divide you. CDMVT, T stands for true direction, V stands for variation, M stands for magnetic direction, D stands for deviation, and C stands for compass. Okay, the thumb rules are deviation east, compass least. East rhymes with least, deviation west, 
compass best. So there is a trio of CDM, compass deviation magnetic. Another rule of thumb is variation east, magnetic least, variation west, magnetic west. Now this completes a trio of MVD. Now look at this example. Your true direction is 280. When I say require track, it's a track that you need to require, need to carry out. It means it's a direction that you need to follow when you're flying to reach from A to B. On the chart, you see the direction to follow is 280, but you only have a magnetic compass to find your direction. So what will you do? You'll check your variation and then find out the relevant magnetic indication to follow a magnetic direction to follow to stay automatically on true direction 280. So variation west magnetic best. It means magnetic direction value will be more than 280. By how much? By the value of variation. So it's simple. The solution would be variation west, magnetic best. True is 280. Variation is 5. So your magnetic will be magnetic would be 280 plus 5 is equal to 285 degrees like this. So now you can easily follow a compass direction of 285 to stay on a required track of 2802. This is how we can navigate at the most basic level without any sophisticated instruments. So considering our magnetic track to follow is 285, I look at my cardinal points. Where do I get 285? This is 270. So 285 would be somewhere here. This is 285 magnetic. Now this direction is actually my direction. A parallel to this direction, I can draw anywhere. A to B. This is the line my aircraft has to follow from A to reach B in terms of directions. And you can do that very well with the help of a compass. All right. Now what happens is the air is not always still. When I say still, it means zero wind or nil winds. There will be times when the wind will be blowing from this side. Okay. If the wind is blowing from this side, what will happen? In this case, the aircraft required track was 285 magnetic and the aircraft heading, as you see, both are in the same direction, is also 285 magnetic. Your required track and your heading will always be the same when there is zero wind, when there is nil wind. So it becomes very easy for you to fly. You keep your heading as good as your required track and you continue flying in that direction till the time you reach your destination. But when the wind exists, okay, this wind is the wind coming from left side. Okay, the left side is also known as port side. When the wind is coming from port side, a pilot is unaware about the effects of the wind. A pilot is maintaining a steady heading and pilot is happy going on 285, going to reach the destination in some time. Unaware that there is a lift affecting the pilot from the port side. Nobody informed, he has not measured it, he has no idea what is happening. So what will happen? The pilot will tend to maintain on 285 a heading, but the pilot's required track on which he is will not be maintained and the pilot will be making a deviated track like this without realizing that his heading is same but because of the port wind the aircraft has been pushed to the right side so whenever your wind is coming from the left side your aircraft will be pushed on the opposite side, that is the right side. Okay. 
if this happens then this yellow line that you see is called as tmg tmg means track made good although we call it track made good it is not good because we have been deviated from a track without knowing because the pilot is still maintaining a heading of 285 magnetic so the heading is not changing but the track has changed completely as the pilot is trying to reach the destination due to the effect of the wind now there are two scenarios in this case either the pilot will not know until the time the pilot has reached this point the number 3 point and realize oh i am off track i need some corrections to reach my destination or the pilot will be at number 1 position and the pilot would have been informed about the wind coming from both side and in order to not be on tmg what the pilot can do is the pilot can simply adjust his or her heading in the opposite direction or in the direction of the wind so other scenario in this case would be if the pilot is informed about the wind or the wind can be anticipated okay a and b same situation the pilot has zero winds a maintaining a steady heading required track now somebody has informed the pilot that there is wind coming from the port direction so in order to stay on the track what would the pilot do the pilot would change the heading in the direction of the wind depending upon the strength of the wind there is a simple formula which is derived by a concept known as velocity triangle okay and using that formula he or she will know how much change is required to the existing heading of 280 in the other direction if you make that make that change to your heading then although the heading of the aircraft will change but the aircraft will still maintain a path which will be required track 285 so this path that we talk about is known as flight path okay and flight path is the path traced by cg of aircraft center of gravity of aircraft not necessarily the heading heading and flight path can have different values in wind conditions please write these important points remember these are your building blocks the more strong your basics are the easier it will be for you to answer complicated questions what i'm showing you right now is just the introduction to things that happen in air and how we learn them on a piece of paper and how we solve the relevant calculations or numericals everything is practical to be applied when you are flying in the air okay so your flight path could be different if there is a wind condition so what happens what is your observation in this case observation 1 to stay on required track in wind if wind is from port that is left change heading into the wind in bracket i'll write you also turn left to adjust your heading this concept i have seen students struggle really really struggle a lot to understand 
Thus, I have devised a strategy to introduce it in between now and then and slowly build up whenever we have a session on in-flight navigation, velocity, triangle. You will be ready with the prerequisite knowledge and so ready to do your numeric reads. What is it that I'm talking about right now? I'm talking about if the wind is from the port side, for you to stay on the required track, you have to change your heading by turning towards port or that is turning left. A simple rule. I want you all to register this rule in your mind thoroughly right now. And if you have any confusions, you ask. Students are generally given abbreviations which are so confusing, they are not logical. Take a couple of minutes to memorize this thoroughly before you ask a question. Everybody, observe this. Observe this. Take a couple of minutes and understand what is happening. In a short period of time, you have seen something known as required track. You have seen track made good. You have already seen how to convert directions from true to magnetic. And then you have seen what sort of effect is done by the wind. Now, the tricky part here is, in most of your uh, textbooks and study material, you will think that the first diagram is the meaning of what is known as drift. Drift is basically the aircraft being affected by wind coming from either direction. It could be from the port side or the starboard side. But this is not drift for your calculations and for your sums. This is track made good. So if the aircraft is drifted, it's, it means the aircraft is on TMG. Because of the wind from the port side, the TMG is on the right of required track, or the aircraft has drifted on the right of the required track. But for all your sums, all your questions, this is not the meaning of it. Although in reality, port wind is pushing you to the right side, so port wind causes the aircraft to drift to the starboard side. Right side is starboard side. But whenever you talk about drift, you need to know that the pilot was informed about the wind and whenever the pilot is informed about the wind, the pilot does not wait to be drifted. The pilot simply makes a correction to the heading. So this second example where the wind is from the port and you have actually adjusted your heading towards the left of the port is the example of a drift known as starboard drift. Sir, unable to hear you.
All stations, all stations, Mumbai Control, how do you read? Radio for Victor Tango, my kindred. Radio 5, Victor Tango, Victor India, Romeo. Radio 5, Victor Tango, Delta, India, November. Okay, okay. So, what was the last word that you heard? Please help me recollect. Someone? Starboard drift. Yeah. So, when we talk about starboard drift, it means the aircraft would have been pushed on the right of the required track. But because we already knew the effect of the wind, we have corrected it and we have our heading on the left or the port of the required track. So when your heading is on the left of your required track, that actually denotes you are allowing for starboard drift. Okay. This is a paradox. This is two opposites happening, but I'm clarifying it first thing first. Whatever obstacles you can possibly have in future, you will not go through them. Yes, no, maybe a couple of minutes. Everybody has to rephrase that sentence. Whenever wind effect or drift is anticipated, we make correction to the heading and allow for the drift. In that case, if my heading is in the direction of the wind, then the wind is from the port side. And if my heading is on the port of the required track or left of the required track, then it is starboard drift and not when the TMG is on the right. The TMG on the right would mean that the TMG is on the right and we did not know about the wind and now the aircraft has actually drifted away. But there we do not use the term drift. Are you following? Okay. Uh -huh, sir. Okay, Meet, you had a question. Go ahead. I want to know. Uh, I want to know that uh, that's a figure which is drawn drawn by me in a note. Uh, so I have to complete uh, compare that figure with the velocity triangle. In that figure only, I get confused. We will. We will discuss velocity triangle when we do the velocity triangle. Okay, so stand by. Please focus on what is happening because these are basics. And if you rush thinking about uh, my target is something else, then you might miss the basics. You might think that I already know this, but stick with it. Everything will come to you in time. Definitely. If I've mentioned velocity triangle, I'll also share velocity triangle with you. But it will come. Okay, stand by for it. Be patient. It will come and then you can verify. But my task, you have to confirm whether you are aware about the task that I've given you right now, students. So go through the notes, whatever notes, if you have written following my voice, I'm going to ask you all one by one, everyone. And if you have any doubts with respect to this TMG, required track, track made good, drift, port, starboard, then you please ask. And if you have any doubts, understanding what is drift, uh, what is TMG, what is required track, please feel free to ask. I want you to be thorough with what I'm saying, okay? Focus on what is happening. Focus on what you're learning. 
it takes a lot of years to explain something so complicated in an easy way. You don't take it for granted. I'm giving you time to study right in class. So don't misuse it, anyone. So who's going first? Bango Sarah Uniform Bravo, go ahead. So dropkin basically the uh, difference between uh, the aircraft heading. And the planned track. Uh, so, and two types of drift are also there. The expected drift is the difference between the heading of the aircraft and the planned track. And what the actual drift is the drift between the heading of the aircraft and the track made good. Okay. So, Boji, good effort. But Read you one, sir. Okay, students, can you hear me? There's some frequent disconnection again. Are you able to hear me, everyone? Yes. Okay. Okay, so follow my voice. Uh, I'm unable to turn on the video. And the screen share, I think that yeah, screen share is working good. So, this difference, okay, make these notes, okay, in your own words, do make these notes. Uh, this difference between the required track and track made good, okay? This is known as track error angle. It is not called as the drift angle or the value of drift. It is called as track error angle see this is the key the terms because questions and everything is based upon the terms although the in, in in talking sense the word is true that the aircraft is at present drifted to the right and this will happen if the pilot would not adjust for the drift but when this happens the angular difference, we don't call the angular difference to be drift. We call it track error angle because there are times that the pilot might have already adjusted for the allowed drift or applicable drift. And still he or she would have faced more wind, which was not anticipated because of which they would go on a TMG. So while being on the TMG also, the aircraft heading 
and the value of TMG in terms of directions could vary. Okay, so it could be a combined effect of the aircraft allowing for the wind effect that is drift and still being on TMG. That is also possible. So this is TMG here. And here what you see is we can make an extended line from your heading. And this angle that you see here, this angle is known as drift. And in this case, this is drift starboard. Remember that. Because you have allowed for that. Even in this case here, if you check, if you make an extended line for your heading like this, and if you check this angle, this angle represents a drift only. Because the TMG is still different and your heading is still different. But there is a formula to help you derive your drift when there is TMG and when there is heading. Simple. I'll be giving you all these formulas when we talk about this concept in detail. This concept will be a part of velocity triangle and in-flight navigation and 1 by 60, all three together. So your observation number one, to stay on required track in wind, if wind is from port, change heading into the wind that is turn left. Here exists drift starboard. Write down the second observation. Try to sketch it. Sankal, can you give me in your own words? If you understand, it's okay if you're wrong. Meet, are you following? Um, Meet will come to velocity triangle. Okay. This is more important. If you study this easily, velocity triangle, velocity triangle actually is completely based upon your navigation computer anyway. Even in your velocity triangle, what you really have is your required track, your track make good. So just to answer your question, if you make this, the wind is coming from what? Left, right? So this will become your velocity triangle. Simple. But don't jump here. Wait for it because everything requires basics. Find the Sierra Sierra Hotel. Go ahead. Waiting for you. Dinesh, are you following? Uh, form, sir. Uh, sir, can you please repeat the question? Yeah. Question, what will happen if the wind is from the starboard side? That is right, sir. Remember, uh, the left sir, of the aircraft is port and the right of the aircraft is starboard. Yeah. If, if the wind is from the starboard side, then uh, we will move towards the port side. What does it mean? Be more specific. I'm not sure what you're trying to say. Are you talking about TMG? Are you talking about drift, heading? See, observe okay. this statement. Observe this statement. And based upon this statement, Frame your statement. It's just going to be opposite to this. Focus. It will be easy. Take your time. I'll come back to you. Adarsh, can you give it a shot? You're on mute, Adarsh. You're on unmute, but your voice is not reaching. Sir, 
Sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, we are experiencing in this case is a poor drip. And uh, in this case, sir, we have to turn the right, sir, uh, to uh, stay on the required track, sir. Very good. The... Very good. Very good. See, a little bit focus and you get the exact answer. Good job. Others try. Uh, see, uh, this is why we do readability check in the start of the class to know whose mic is working, whose mic is not working. Others, can you try adjusting and see if you can talk? No, it's not working. You'll have to try to remove your headphone jack and put it again, probably. And in your application settings in the audio, try to select this mic if possible. No issues. We'll come to Nehal. Uh, Nehal, can you try? Others just try to fix your mic in between. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I'll help you get started to stay on your required track in wind from starboard. That is right. Continue from here. Yeah, we don't. We cannot hear you. So we we need to change heading or uh, into the right. Simple. We need to change heading to the right. That is the direction from where the wind is coming. Here exists port drift. Complete port drift. Even when the aircraft is on the right. Uh, correction. Even when the wind is coming from the right, you would have been pushed to the port. But right now your heading is on the right. But it is a port drift. Because you have allowed for that drift. Most of the times, whenever the word drift will come, you will assume only this situation. So change heading into wind, that is turn right. Here exists Why port drift? Because if heading is not changed, aircraft will be pushed towards port and will become off track. In clear words. All right. Meet, you want to try answering in short? You have you were raising your hand. Yes, sir. Uh, I have clear at these both points. Yeah. Could you try to rephrase? Yes, sir. Uh, when the wind is from the port side, so if we cannot allow for the drift, then the our uh, we maintain our heading, but the due to the wind, uh, we go towards the starboard side uh, on a new track. If we allow for the drift by changing our heading towards the port side, then we uh, we automatically on our required track. Very good. Just replace the word new track and call it a track made good or deviated track. Okay. Gotcha. Very good. Good. Easy. Shweta, any confusion? Negative, sir. Sparsh Manan, are you following? Affirm, sir. Affirm, sir. 
लिखित विरल नेहल आल्सो फॉलोइंग राइट दिनेश आदर्श फॉलोइंग i cannot hear you others so whatever you have to say you'll have to put it in the chat box any questions anyone we have a question from dinesh is a aerodynamic force acting on the plane how can we control plane to require track you use your control surfaces and just depending upon which side you are being pushed you control it uh, you can you maneuver it in the opposite direction uh while making a turn you have to use ailerons a little bit of yaw if necessary but yaw is not necessary ailerons are enough i'm sorry but if the system is not allowing me to turn on the video anyway aerodynamic forces are always acting on an airplane what are those forces there are four forces lift drag thrust and weight so it is okay the plane is designed in such a way that even though all of the aerodynamic forces are acting on the airplane the plane can still fly okay now this thing is a bonus for you what we have learned today okay i had to show you the application of cdm vt okay into your in flight navigation solutions okay it has it has huge applications it can come anywhere cdmvt is like grammar in english language no matter what subject you always have to use grammar to write your answers cdmvt directions are like that good so class what we'll do is we'll take a short breather and uh, i'm going to try to restart the system in the meantime so that we get the camera back on and uh, what you can do is you can take a 10 minute breather meet me at 6 and we'll start with magnetism okay everyone so come sharp at 6 o'clock
Okay, welcome back everyone. Luckily, we were able to fix the issue with the camera also. Sharp at 10 minutes. Huh. See, I'll just remind you all, whenever the aircraft has to turn, okay, it's too bright, right? Whenever the aircraft has to turn, okay, it on ground the aircraft can turn using the nose wheel steering. There is a way to control the steering of the nose wheel, and then there is a rudder over here at the end, which, when moved one side, pushes the aircraft on the other side like this. But the limit of movement of this rudder is very less, or else it can cause structural damage to the aircraft. But a rudder is there sometimes, but you don't use rudder uh, to turn. Whenever you want to turn, let's say now this is the heading and I want to go to this heading. This is 90 degree, right? I turn like this. And how do I initiate a turn like this? There are two ailerons. One on this side, the trailing edge near the wingtip. This is the trailing edge of the aircraft wing. This is the leading edge of the aircraft. So on the trailing edge towards the winter, both sides you have ailerons. One ailerons, when goes up, the other comes down automatically. Whichever aileron goes down, that wing lifts up like this. And the moment the aircraft has lifted like this, it starts turning like this. And this is how the turn is initiated over this. Okay. Good. Is everybody back? Uh, Nehal, Viral, Dinesh, can you hear me? Perform. Perform, sir. Perform, sir. Perform. Perform, sir. Okay, students, I hope you can hear me, right? Good. Any questions? Meet, you have a question, right? Go ahead, quickly. So, uh, is there cha in chat variation is written? Because the chat has a two, di two, head, uh, two directions. So, the variation is given when we go for, uh, when we get for chart, when we get chart. It's mentioned on all charts. All are not, the variation is mentioned. The value of variation changes with respect to an observer's position. If you are in India, I am in America, the value for both of us with respect to variation will change. Although the location of the magnetic north will be the same for both of us, it will be just one location with respect to true north. So depending upon which track you are on, besides the track, the variation value will always be mentioned whether 7 degrees east or 7 degrees west just besides the track on your navigation charts and how would your track be mentioned the track would be mentioned as a straight line or a curved line just besides that just 7 degrees east or 7 degrees west simple and sir uh, deviation also mentioned or we have to ask someone for deviation me try to recollect what we did in the last class where do you get deviation from students? 
between the angular difference between magnetic and no 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 that is the definition where do you get the value of deviation who can give me the answer try to recollect from from gyro uh, gyromagnetic compass no mid go through your notes no suboji sir whenever we carry out compass swing before departing okay where is the deviation mentioned in the cockpit students compass correction card it is always there besides magnetic compass in the aircraft cockpit compass correction card a pilot whenever a pilot or anybody else does a compass swing they check the value of deviation and they enter that for all different locations or for all major and quadrantal points they mention that on the compass correction card the value of deviation we don't need to ask anyone it is always there okay no problem good question everybody was able to remember students you have to make your own notes okay you have to remember these points anybody else has any other questions okay so start fresh start from a fresh page right magnetism right today's date all right great so what is magnetism okay in simple words it's a property to attract certain kind of materials materials basically who have iron in them materials who have iron in them we call them ferrous materials okay so we can write down the first point about magnetism is it is the property to attract ferrous ferrous is the term given to materials that have iron in them property to attract ferrous materials when they are magnetized now what is this magnetized means normally if you see any ferrous object an iron object like a small screw or a nail at your in your house or a hammer or the metal part of your hammer they are not magnetized it means they cannot attract other ferrous materials but they can be attracted by magnets or any material that is magnetized so magnetism can occur naturally in ferrous materials we call them natural magnets or magnetism can be induced into any ferrous material through a certain process okay so any um iron material material of ferrous material can behave like a magnet if we magnetize it or if there is an electromagnetic current known as the alternating current flows through it because alternating current has a property this is how the alternating current looks like this alternating current has a property along with the electric current or electric field it also has a perpendicular magnetic field like this and this magnetic field gives rise to magnetic strength or lines of magnetic strength which can be absorbed by a ferrous material either temporarily or permanently if these lines are temporarily absorbed then your uh, magnet is known as a temporary magnet it will behave like a magnet for some time it means it will attract other iron materials within its range for some time if it is permanently magnet then it will attract all the time now what happens is let's say this is a bar magnet all right a bar magnet 
a magnet that looks like a chocolate bar every magnet or every piece of ferrous material that is magnetized they have two poles this is one pole and this is the second pole the sharpest points are known as poles okay what is the meaning of this pole what happens is the strength of a magnet or the radius of its magnetic energy as we call it uh, we call it magnetic flux it depends upon how far the lines of force travel like this they travel from one pole and they enter the second pole if they are coming out from this pole then this pole becomes south pole of the bar magnet and if they all are entering the other pole the other pole becomes the north pole of your bar magnet and these are known as lines of flux flux can be determined as magnetic energy so if i take a small metal iron uh, a small iron nail and keep it here there will be no force of attraction because this iron is not falling under the influence of the lines of flux for this bar magnet but if i take another piece of iron here then this piece of iron will be attracted and it will stick to that bar magnet because this iron is under the field of magnetic flux for this particular bar magnet this is how your other ferrous materials will be attracted by magnets if those ferrous materials are within the range of the lines of magnetic flux okay now this range of magnetic flux depends upon the strength of the magnetism for every bar magnet certain magnets are very strong certain magnets are very weak certain magnets only act as magnets when you pass through pass ac current through them so they are known as temporary magnets or electromagnets the doorbell in your house is a classic example of an electromagnet whenever you press the button the small part in the doorbell acts like a magnet it attracts and it rings the bell whenever you leave the button it does not act a act act a, a, as a magnet and it goes back to its original position that does not ring the bell okay so only this nail will be attracted and it will stick now the attraction will also be governed by certain laws okay so whenever there comes magnetism you have two laws first is a law of attraction and the law says like poles law of attraction says unlike poles attract each other it means north pole will attract south pole of any bar magnet two bar magnets will stick to each other but the sticking point would be the south pole of one bar magnet and the north pole of the other bar magnet okay and the law of attraction can also be called as law of repulsion when you say like poles repel each other which means north pole will repel when i say repel it is opposite of attract attraction is pulling repulsion is pushing north pole will repel north pole of the other magnet now these two laws are highly important for you to understand 
and everything that is about compass magnetism, earth magnetism, and so on. Sounds simple. It is very simple. One more law that we have is. strength of attraction depends on square of distance between two magnets or one magnet and one ferrous metal but we are now only talking about magnets and magnets in law of attraction also we are talking about two magnets Everywhere we are only talking about what happens to two different magnets in each other's influence. So to talk about observation number one, if this is how, if this is the orientation of one bar magnet, let's say this is the north pole, this is the south pole, then the other bar magnet that will be attracted. would look like this south pole and north pole only then there will be a force of attraction like this both are coming to each other attraction second observation tells us if this is a bar magnet north pole south pole and this is the other bar magnet North Pole and South Pole like this, then there will be a force of repulsion. Both will be pushed in the opposite direction from each other. And the third observation tells me that the strength of attraction and you can say the same, the strength of repulsion also, North, South, South, North depends upon square of the distance. If the distance increases by two, then the force of repulsion will be more by the square of two, that is two to the four. And if the distance decreases by two, then the strength of the force of attraction will also be more that is square. So, if let's say distance is 2 meters, then attraction will be 4. The value of attraction, you can say 4 Teslas. Teslas is the unit to measure your magnetic force or micro Teslas. Same repulsion will also be the value 4, depending upon whether the distance is increasing or decrease. Remember, the closer the magnets are, closer the magnets for unlike poles, stronger force of attraction. For like poles, stronger force of repulsion. Make sense so far, everyone? I'm going to dictate a couple of lines. Please write them down. So the first line you have written, what is magnetism? It is a property to attract ferrous materials when they are magnetized. Then you had written down the laws. Okay. Now I'm going to just simply give you a few points to that I'm going to dictate. Please write them down thoroughly. Point number two, or you can write in continuation with your points if you have ended here in your notes. If somebody asks you, where is the power of a magnet concentrated? Okay. What do you think will be the answer? Make a wild guess. Yes, Nehal, Adarsh, Viral. 
Dinesh, Manan. Right on. A magnet has its magnetic power. A magnet has its magnetic power concentrated at its ends. And these ends are called as ports. Now, this is a very good definition. This is a very good point for you to remember because it is not clearly mentioned anywhere else. You might not come across this point several times in life. So, you need to remember it once it's come to your mind. Others is suggesting core of earth. We'll come to it uh, when we talk about when we talk about the earth's uh, magnetic force. Then we assume something something that is not directly related to the core. It's something to do with the core. We'll come there. Right on the next point. The earth behaves like a magnet earth behaves like a magnet with poles now most of you all already know the earth has a magnetic north pole and a magnetic south pole through which the earth's axis passes and about which the earth rotates in the direction east right we are talking about the same poles the same magnetic pole towards the north and the same magnetic pole towards the south pole. So the third point is, Earth behaves like a magnet with poles, with a north magnetic pole and a south magnetic pole. Earth behaves like a magnet with poles, with a north magnetic pole, or we also call it as magnetic north pole, and south magnetic pole, or you can also call as magnetic south pole, when it comes to abbreviations. Generally, you will not see NMP and SMP in abbreviations. You'll always see MMP and MSP as abbreviations. But this is just for you to understand. You can write the whole words. So what happens to light poles? Like it. Do light poles attract each other or repel each other? The ripples of light poles repel each other. All right. Now, what happens is when it comes to Earth, the Earth behaves as if there is a strong bar magnet passing through its center, not just the core, but the center. And the magnet is twisted like this, not in one straight line like the other bar magnet. So write down, the earth behaves as if a strong bar magnet passes through its center. The earth behaves as if a strong bar magnet passes through its center. This here we can denote as the north pole. This here we can denote as the south pole. So we can get a tilted axis, which is our axis of rotation of the magnetic axis, like this. So the Earth behaves as if there exists a strong bar magnet through the center of the Earth. Okay. So what would Earth's magnetism look like? Earth's magnetism would look like lines of force, 
coming from the south pole like this and going into the north pole like this. Earth will have a huge influence upon ferrous materials. But the good part is, not just the good, but actually a great part for all of us is Earth's North and the South Pole, they do not attract ferrous materials. Attract as in pull. Okay, the force is not as strong as to pull yourself towards the North Pole or the South Pole. But any ferrous material under the influence of this magnetic field will work as per the law of attraction or repulsion and change its orientation. So I'm going to give you a line that will really uh, will be helpful if you can remember the line here. Write it down, everyone. Earth's poles don't attract that is pull. Earth's poles don't attract, that is pull, other objects, but a freely suspended magnet but a freely suspended magnet does align its south pole with the Earth's north pole. But a freely suspended magnet does align its south pole with the Earth's north pole. Pole. Viral, can you give me a read back if possible for the statement? Earth, po Earth a pole doesn't attract objects. A freely suspended magnet does not align with its uh, does align with its south pole with its Earth north pole. Yeah, Viral, your sentence is not clean. It can cause confusion. Have you not written it down or you are not reading it properly? First you said don't and do. Make, make sure you write it clearly, everyone. Okay, you are making a statement. Earth's poles don't attract, that is pull. But a freely suspended magnet does get aligned or does align its south pole. Does, not does not, does align its south pole with the Earth's north pole. Continue in bracket, under the influence of Earth's magnetic field, following the laws of attraction. Continue the statement, continue with the paragraph, under the influence of Earth's magnetic field, following the laws of attraction. Which law? Like pole, unlike poles. Simple as that. Viral, you said the same thing, but it was not clean. Do you mind repeating it again? Earth pole don't attract other objects, a freely suspended magnet does align with its south pole, with its earth north pole, under its magnetic field. And I'm yet to write uh, ahead. In bracket, you will write under the earth's magnetic influence or under the earth's magnetic field, following the laws of attraction. So what we're talking about is Although we studied that North Pole, South Pole, there is a force of attraction and even if Earth has a magnetic North Pole, normally the magnets are not attracted to the Earth's North Pole, but they act under the influence of the Earth's magnetic field. What happens when I say freely suspended? Let's take this example of a magnet, small bar magnet like this, and I have tied it with a string. This is a top view right now for this magnet. Okay. If I'm tying it with the string in the center, it means it is free to move. 
when i tie it with a string and if the this small magnet is sensitive enough its south pole will align with the earth's north pole like this and it will become like this if i take another example if i keep a magnet like this with the north pole uh, uh, south and north like this the moment i suspend this magnet freely and if the magnet is sensitive enough and light enough to counteract the effect of gravity that's why we say freely free to free to move or freely suspended tying it with a rope or putting it in a sharp pivot then what will happen this magnet will automatically align itself by turning in this direction and it will align itself from this position to this position south and north a small magnet south pole will be attracted to the earth's north pole like this following the laws of attraction but it will not be attracted the attraction will not happen but it will align itself with the earth's north pole and this is the basis of your magnetic compass you use a small sensitive magnetic needle which looks like this with a small center for pivot from the horizontal point of view it looks like this and the pivot is a sharp point like this it is free to move this is side view and this is top view so if my magnet is aligned then i know this is the south pole of the magnet this is the north of the magnet but this south pole of the magnet is actually pointing in my 00 north direction so generally most of the students are still not aware that the south pole of the magnetic needle is actually showing you the north magnetic direction so this south pole of the magnetic needle is also known as north seeking pole and on your magnetic needle to increase your confusion as a student they will write this as north and this as south so what students think is that because north is written here and all bar magnet poles are denoted by n and s they think this is the north pole of the magnetic needle and that is showing us the north pole of the earth but that is wrong the n is just to show you that this needle is pointing towards north is it clear students these are the points that will separate you from other students and help you clear in your first attempt simple okay a couple of minutes to embrace everything to soak in everything that you have studied so far go through your notes see if you have any questions so in this case okay in this case what will happen is your north pole is always given a blue color south pole is always given a red color so in this case what will happen is you can simply see that unlike colors will be repelled by each other uh, correction will be attracted by each other like this not seeking pole and this will be showing you south why because red denotes a south pole of a magnet like this and blue will always denote north pole of that particular magnet this is another hint so there are chances of you getting confused but always remember the south pole of a compass needle is showing you the north of the earth red will be attracted to blue and blue will be attracted to red blue is always north remember that 
North Pole also always talking about poles. Blue is North Pole and this is South Pole. So I will erase the N and S. Now it makes complete sense. South Pole of the magnetic needle showing you North called as North Seeking Pole on a compass. So what do I do? I put a rose line. What is a rose line now? A rose line is on a circle like this. Where I make my cardinal points. 0, 0, 0, 0, 9, 0, 1, 8, 0. Like a dial of a watch. But instead of 12 hours, it will give you 360 degrees segregations. 0, 4, 5, 1, 3, 5, 2, 1, 5, sorry, 2, 2, 5, 3, 1, 5, like this. And then more graduations, maybe 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 15 degrees equally. And that makes up your basic compass. Depending upon your position, the way you move, the compass needle will always show you not. And whatever you see on a compass in your direction of your nose or your heading becomes your magnetic. So if this is what a compass is showing, and if this is the direction of my airplane, then what is the heading of my aircraft? The heading is 090 magnetic in this case. For this aircraft, what is the heading? For this aircraft, the heading would be 180 because the compass will always be pointing towards the north. But you are going in this direction. So for you, your direction would be heading while the compass not will always be shown to you the way it is. So compass not, apart from deviation, the magnetic needle will always show you the Earth's north. Okay, easy to understand. Anybody has any doubts, please ask. Okay, so what do I make up, make out from this silence? No questions. So, Shweta, what do you think? Uh, what, how can you define the north seeking pole of a compass needle? The north seeking pole of the compass needle is the south pole, which gets attracted to the north uh, magnetic north pole of the Earth. Very. Good. North seeking pole is the south pole of the magnetic needle. Just make sure you mention that also for clarity for the other person who's listening it. Uh, which is which is attracted and aligned with the Earth's north magnetic pole or magnetic north pole. Very good. Okay. Um, Spash, can you tell me the property of Earth's lines of magnetic flux? It is there. Everything is in diagram. These are one-line answers. Varsha, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. What can you talk about Earth's lines of force, lines of magnetic flux, lines of Earth's magnetic flux? So, 
the lines of earth's magnetic flux flow from the south pole and converge at the north pole remember this everyone subhuj if you haven't missed much don't worry can you tell me what was the last thing that you heard so we were talking about this your magnetic compass will always show you north depending upon what you see on the magnetic compass under your nose that is your heading so in this case although the compass is pointing at north you are in this direction and that direction is 09 and 0 east so that is your heading in this case although the compass is showing you not here for you also in the aircraft the compass will show you not there but your heading is this direction which is 180 we are talking about how the compass represents north and how you determine your own heading with respect to that north whatever direction you you see on the dial you don't have to look at the magnetic north you have to look at how you have held it and what do you see when the north is aligned what do you see straight ahead that is your direction one more example this case who can give me a rough idea heading of this aircraft 315 315 subhujit your answer 315 315 makes sense see very good magnet good okay right now next point earth's magnetic north is not the true north we all know true north is fixed magnetic north keeps changing position right in the meanwhile we have couple of questions in the chat yes aircraft itself is a iron aircraft has its own magnetism called as aircraft magnetism because of which we calibrate a compass and have compass correction cards you cannot say which pole is powerful in a magnet both poles share equal amount of magnetic force it is equally divided in both poles north also south also the maximum field of magnetic flux you will find in the center of the north and the south pole while the maximum intensity of attraction or repulsion you will find near the poles both poles depending upon the opposite pole of the other magnet earth's magnetic north changes position about every 1000 years write this next point earth's magnetic north changes positions once about every 1000 years approximately present magnetic north pole is located at approximately present magnetic north pole is located at 790 degrees north 070 degrees west and we we call it the blue north okay and magnetic south pole is located at 79 degrees south 111 degrees Right. While where will be a true north and where will be a south, uh, true south? True north pole will be ninety degrees north, and true south pole will be ninety degrees south all the time. What are ninety degree north and south? We will discuss this when we talk about Earth and gravity and everything. But remember these points. this will not be asked to you in any question this is for your general knowledge i have hardly seen any questions come about where is the earth's actual magnetic north or where is earth's actual south pole but the difference can be asked in general logic but the value will not be asked 
So don't worry, this is for your good to know information, maybe for future interviews, debates, you can memorize it, increase it in your, add it in your knowledge base, what I call, what I call a treasure of your mind. Whenever you have a debate or group interview, you can use these points to outshine the others in future. So can you please repeat it again, uh, what you have written right now? So the Earth's magnetic North Pole is not stationary, right? The difference between Earth's true North and the magnetic North is variation. So right now, with respect to that, we have a variation of 11 degrees already. But that is with respect to the North Pole. Um, so every thousand years, the North Pole changes its position. When you look at the Earth from top, if this is the true North, okay, this is 90 degrees, this circle is zero degrees. The same thing when you look at from side view, this is your true North, 90 degrees, and this is your equator, zero, zero degrees, like this. This is side view, this is top view. You make an angle with respect to the equator to determine these degrees. This angle here made is 90 degrees. So I call this 90 degrees, this point on the surface of the earth. This becomes 90 degrees towards the north and this becomes with respect to the equator, 90 degrees towards the south. Okay. So, if I make this angle here, this is around 35 degrees. So this point on the surface becomes 35 degrees north. Above the equator is north, below the equator is south. So, all the points on Earth, on this line parallel to the equator here, they will be, you will locate them, all these points. You locate them at 35 degrees north, like this, on the Earth. If the places are located here, then you check out the angle and you'll see the angle is about 70, 75 degrees. So it will be 70 degrees north here. And all the physical points locations on this line, they will be represented by 70 degree north. When I say 70 degree north or south, they are called as latitudes. So what is the present position of magnetic north? The magnetic north is not exactly here. It is at 79 degrees. Where is 79 degrees? This angle somewhere here. So it is somewhere on this line. The magnetic knot has come down from the true north position. And that when you look at from the top view, this will be the parallel from the top view for your 75 or 79 degree knot. So the magnet is somewhere on this line, the magnetic knot. And remember when I was teaching you variation deviation, I made a circle to show that this is the moment of the magnetic knot keeps changing due to the precession of the earth. Where is 35 degrees? 35 degrees from top view will look, you will be able to make out somewhere here. 70 degrees will be here. So right now, the magnetic north is here. Talking about 70 degrees west, this straight line, when you look at from the front view, is 0, 0 degrees east-west. And this line here represents 90 degrees west because left side is west, right side is east. So 70 degrees west would be somewhere here, this line would be your 0, 070 0 degrees west. When you look at it from top view, you can actually make the angles. This is known as prime meridian, which is 0, 0, 0 degrees east west. And this is 90 degrees, this hemisphere, this is 0, 900 0 west. Where is your 70 degree? This is your 70 degrees somewhere, 0, 070 0 west. So where exactly is your magnetic north pole right now? Here. Exactly. 70 degrees west and 79 degrees north. So this is the actual position of your magnetic north after it has changed or after it changes. What I've just showed you is the best way to determine a position with the help of 
longitudes and latitudes, which is a system known as graticule. But we will discuss it. I think we have discussed it in a little bit. We'll discuss it again when we are doing Earth uh, in detail. Okay, but this is again a bonus. And as I've said, everything is interrelated with everything. So it doesn't matter when you study what, as long as you all remember what you're studying. Any doubts anyone has here, please feel free to ask. These are the building blocks. The more thorough you are with these points, the better will be your navigation journey and the quicker will be your navigation journey. Lekhit, Meet, Viral, Manan, Dinesh, Nihal, Adar, Sparsh, Sankal, Shatta, Subhoji. And that's so many students are going to go through the recording because they cannot attend live lectures. If you have any questions, any doubts, let me know. Okay, write down the next point. Strength of a magnet. Now this question can be asked. Strength of a magnet depends upon number one, type of material. So in magnets also, there are different materials, different ferrous materials. So the strength of the magnet depends upon number one, type of material. Number two, uh, number two mass of the magnet. So how heavy is the magnet? When I say mass, mass does not really mean heaviness. Mass really means the amount of matter inside an object. So more the matter, more the ferrous material or magnetized material in a magnet, more will be the strength of the magnet. So a magnetic needle although will be very sensitive, but it will be not as strong as a bar magnet because bar magnet will have more matter in it or more mass in it. Write down next point, strength of force of attraction or repulsion. Strength of force of attraction or repulsion. Between two magnets. decreases and underline decreases strength of the force of attraction or repulsion between two magnets decreases underline decreases as the square of the distance between them So this is the exact definition when I spoke about the force is depending upon the square of the distance. The force decreases, be it attraction or repulsion, by the square of the distance. So if distance is increasing by a certain value, the force of magnetic attraction or repulsion will be reduced by the square root of that value or vice versa. So underline square. You have underline decreases and underline square. Sometimes you get this as a question with two answers in the option to fill in the two blanks. Write down next point. No magnet can exist with only one pole. No magnet can exist with only one pole. Okay, remember this. People have been searching for magnetic monopoles, all scientists since long time, but they have not yet found any such magnet that has only one pole. So this gives us one more statement. Please write it down. When a magnet is broken into smaller pieces, When a magnet is broken into smaller pieces, it 
each piece becomes a magnet with its own north pole and a south pole of equal strengths each piece becomes a magnet with its own north pole and south pole with equal strength this answers the question asked by dinesh earlier which pole is stronger both poles have equal strengths no matter how many pieces you make of a magnet every new piece will behave as a fresh magnet or a new magnet with each north and south pole good everyone interesting right easy interesting this is more than enough for you to not be confused about anything that we are going to study in the next session for navigation we are going to talk about what is hard iron magnetism soft iron magnetism and then we are going to directly learn about earth's magnetic force and its influence on the compass needle so there are two types of earth's magnetic forces one is the horizontal one is the vertical and which force gives you the direction finding property in a magnetic compass and when we start the session i will also share i will also show you a small compass not an aircraft compass a normal compass and i'll also show you a few magnetic properties all right then we will talk about a term known as magnetic dip on which you will get questions a magnetic dip is not good to give us magnetic directions and then i think in next session you will be thoroughly done with the basics of magnetism in its entirety to cover your magnetism for your senior and the only thing left would be different types of errors in a normal compass so please uh what do we say i think day after tomorrow we'll have the next navigation class so please revise not just today's class day before to get yeah, third class second class first class was general discussion and introduction so it's okay second and third class mainly the third and the second class please revise and wherever you have made down notes for variation and deviation okay i want you to write some more points there so please open those files or you can write those in today's notes also as long as you remember it ready right over point number 1 lines joining places of equal variation lines joining places of equal variation are called isogonal lines i s o g o n a l lines joining places of equal variation in bracket you can write on a chart bracket closed are called isogonal lines not just on a chart they can be on a on a representation of a globe also but for you it will be mostly on a chart so in order to not ad continuously adjust for your variation and follow your compass in case you are using only your compass for navigation which will be only in your initial days to be honest and these days nobody is just flying with the help of a compass but in case everything else fails fails you need to know how to navigate using a compass so on a chart an isogonal will be shown if you follow that line you maintain a constant magnetic heading and you will be maintaining a constant true track correct right? that's the meaning of isogonals these lines will show places of equal variation remember different places will have different variation when i show you the earth when we study earth in detail i'll also show you this perspective change in variation from different points on the earth one more point right lines joining places of zero variation lines joining places of zero variation are called agonic lines a g o n i c now these questions keep coming in the exams okay 
lines joining places of zero variation it means places where your true direction and your magnetic direction are the same such places will also exist no matter where your magnetic compass is uh, no matter where your magnetic north is certain areas on the earth even if the magnetic north is at 79 degrees north and true north is 90 degrees north still certain places you will see variation is zero so those lines will be made on your chart and those lines are known as agonic lines please underline isogonal and agonic because most of the times these come as fill in the blanks in your questions good so students welcome to a little serious level of your navigation studies remember first couple of weeks we'll be going a little slow once you have grasped all the basics thoroughly will increase our navigation classes to daily lectures or almost more than 3 to 4 lectures a week remember this is the best pace to give you best impact if you are missing any sessions keep me in the loop you will have access to the recordings after some time it will only be given to the students it will be reserved the playlist will be reserved but right now we are keeping it open because certain students were having ac difficulties accessing the recordings go through your notes make your notes and from the next navigation lecture invitation onwards you will have a history of the lectures in the email and the history of all the class notes as i have written on the whiteboard right now these notes are enough for you whatever material you need to practice i'll be sharing it lecture wise with you not giving you any extra notes so every time it will be like a small mission for you okay talking about practice questions for deviation variation you might be getting it probably tomorrow or before the next navigation lecture so be on the lookout for your email and once you get that email go through the uh, practice questions i'm not giving you those before because i was trying to see if i could teach you velocity triangle along with this and give you practice questions together but i'll see and if i can just issue out variation deviation practice questions then i'll do that at the earliest and you can practice also okay one more thing before i go uh, the best strategy for navigation is regular revision okay i'm giving you time in the way i'm teaching you i know you can by heart things and learn things and memorize things in the class also it does not mean that you don't revise whatever your schedule is try to find out your own time for revision and if you have difficulties finding time discuss with me i'll help you schedule in a way wherein you can get time to revise all right class so we're done for the day if you have any more questions drop me a text and i'll see you all day after tomorrow 5 o'clock and tomorrow i'm going to see you for art class okay sir i'll drop you yesterday and doubts in text to whatsapp sorry meet what are you saying i already dropped the message in whatsapp for the yesterday class doubts yeah yeah i'll 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 revert that okay i'll revert that in class with everyone okay, okay so that others can also know and uh, sankalp has a question how do we carry out deviation variation correction using compass correction card so using compass correction card basically a compass correction card will show if you are on a say heading of 315 then on the card you will write the deviations plus 3 it means you have to add 3 to your magnetic reading as you see in the compass if you are on a heading of 315 so it will show you on particular headings mostly cardinal points and quadrantal points it will show you in order to follow a correct magnetic you have to read this on the compass so if you have to follow a magnetic in in our earlier example we found the magnetic heading was 285 but if you look at the compass card uh, on the compass and and follow 285 if there is deviation on that heading then you following 285 on the magnetic compass will not be the true or the real magnetic 285 because of the value of deviation so on the compass card near to that heading if it's mentioned that at 285 you have to do minus 2 then to follow magnetic 285 you will minus 2 from the magnetic heading and you will follow 283 to stay on 285 to keep a real magnetic value of 285 
which will help you stay on a real true track of 280 with 5 degrees variation. This is a good question. This much is enough for all across your CPL. This is not required for your exams. So we don't discuss, but any questions that you ask, you will always get answers. So that is an extra knowledge that will help you. Okay. So keep asking and me. Yeah, we will discuss that in the RT class, move that question. Any other questions, let me know. I'll sign off. If there are more doubts, just drop me a message and we'll discuss. Okay. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bye. sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome, everyone.